Welcome to Gasket U. I'm Ryan Hunter, the Gasket Professor. Hey, how you doing? Uh, today we're going to be working on a small block Chevrolet and the project here is to change out the copper O-rings to stainless. The reason there is we prefer stainless O-rings to copper because we're using a copper head gasket and we'd like to deform the copper head gasket rather than have the soft copper O-ring deform as well. Just gets a better seal if we use stainless steel. So let's get about taking these things out. You'll need one of these handy little hooks and go after the joint where the copper uh, gasket or the copper o-ring begins and ends and these things can get kind of tight in there so get this little pick in there and let's see if we can get it started coming out there we go now we can just pull this copper o-ring out of the motor and it's leaving behind a nice square o-ring groove that's already been cut into this block. The trick here with an o-ring is that I don't know if you can see it in the camera but you don't want to leave a gap. Uh, a gap if you were just to take a set of, uh, of uh, wire cutters and clip this thing and leave it cut. It's got a angle to it and that angle when it's tapped in can leave a groove. Well that groove presents as a leak point for combustion. So, get yourself a set of pliers and just file the end of that wire flat. Not that tough to do, it doesn't take a long time, but that gives us a good flat end of the wire to start with and we're ready to start putting it in. Now, what I've got here is a tool that's available in the SCE kit. This is our O-ring wire kit, part number 31542. It includes an instruction sheet, enough stainless O-ring wire for 10 cylinders, and this little puck. The reason for the puck is so that you don't dent the wire with the ball peen hammer when you're putting it in. So, you'll start out like this with the prepped end of the wire. Now, here's another important point. We want to begin and end the O-ring wire near a bolt. That'll give us better clamp load at the joint part of the wire and therefore a better seal. So let's begin putting it in. So we've got our o-ring wire started next to a bolt and again this is important that we begin and end right on a bolt and now we're going to take our tool and work our way around this wire tapping it into the o-ring groove and sometimes you have to get pretty stiff with it to get it to stick there the o-ring groove is supposed to be cut so that it's got an interference fit in this case we're using a 41,000 stainless wire the O-ring groove is cut 40 thousandths wide, so we've got that one thousandths of an inch interference, which is holding it in place as I go around. So we're working our way around this wire, and at this point, what you'll want to do is do a test cut or a trial cut, and we'll leave it intentionally long because we're going to file this end of the wire as well so that when we're finished with this installation if I do my job right you'll barely be able to see it in a close-up shot on that camera so we'll cut this guy just a little bit long and then I am going to file it okay so our wire is cut now just a shade too long and we'll take our pliers again and carefully put the end of the wire into the pliers and begin to file it down until we get it to fit properly. Being careful not to damage the wire that we put in. This is really not a complex operation, it just requires a little bit of attention. So we've got our wire now cut and filed to fit. 
and we're just going to put that guy in place. And there we have a pretty good O-ring installation. Um, let's seat that in. Now, this entire cylinder, O-ring, required maybe maybe 10 minutes. So in the engine, in the entire engine, you might have uh, an hour, maybe two hours in this whole project. But once this job is done, your O-rings are going to be permanent. And now the only thing you have to worry about is putting the rest of the motor together. And what you've done here is sealed up the motor, the combustion seal, tightly. And it really is, uh, in my opinion, less work than degree in a camshaft. Uh, equally as important. Uh, because we're talking about sealing the combustion pressure here. So, the main points are, use 304 stainless wire. Uh, we want to have the block prepped so that the groove is cut to provide a one thousandths or so interference fit. You could actually have up to three. It's just tougher to get the wire in the hole. Um, and then use, uh, like I say, the 304 stainless wire, which is avail available from SCE in uh, the kits. We also have it available in one pound spools if you'd like to do it in a bulk thing. But uh, this project uh, really doesn't require a heck of a lot of technology. Now, typically, the cut that's done to the block is done either on a boring bar in a machine shop, or it can be done with another tool, a, a tool that Iskandarian sells. is called a groove matic And I think in one of the future video series issues, we're going to do, we're going to actually take a virgin block and put a cut in it. For the o-ring and start from scratch. Now that we've got the o-rings installed, at least in this case just one stainless o-ring, but uh, we'll just go ahead and measure these since we've got the the copper o-rings to measure from. We often get questions, how high should the o-ring be? Uh, what kind of wire height should we have out of the deck? And again that really is a function of the gasket thickness. It's more critical on a thin gasket than it is on a thick but the, the rule of thumb is that we don't want the O-ring protrusion, the wire height, any more than one quarter of the gasket thickness, 25% of the gasket thickness. So let's go again with a 40 thousandths gasket because that's the most common thickness. It's, it's what this little small luck was set up to run from the factory. So we would be shooting for a wire height of uh, around 10 thousandths. And a way to measure that, if you've got a dial caliper, one way is to just set this thing and, and use the tailpiece of the dial caliper, set the, the tool between the two O-rings, and then just run your thumb piece down, and it'll give you roughly, what this guy's showing is about 12 thousandths. Now, if you don't have a dial caliper, there's an easy way to do it, and it's every bit as accurate, and all it requires is some kind of a straight edge, and what I've got here is just a simple stainless steel uh, rigid rule and a set of uh, feeler gauges. So what you would do is just stick your feeler gauge in there until the point, say start at ten thousandths or so, and what I'm measuring, I've been messing around with this for a minute, but what I'm getting between the cylinders here is right at twelve thousandths, like our dial indicator was showing us. So over here we'll check it so if you're on the phone with your gasket company and saying, hey, I've got a gasket uh, height, a wire, a wire O-ring height of 12 thousandths of an inch, what can I run? Well, if these wires were truly seated and we were going to end up with 12 thousandths wire height out of the deck, I would recommend a 50 thousandths thickness gasket. The 12 thousandths wire height might be just a shade too high for a 40 thousandths gasket, and what that would do is provide a really great combustion seal, but it actually unloads the rest of the gasket and we might have coolant leaks around the rest of the gasket body. So, again, the O-ring height is critical to the thickness of the gasket. A copper gasket will allow about 25% of its thickness in uh, wire ring height and still allow good ceiling on the rest of the gasket body. I'm Ryan Hunter, the Gasket Professor. This has been another episode of Gasket U. Email tech questions to us at tech at scegaskets.com.